Pikmin, comparatively to many of Nintendo's games, is very interesting. With its humble origins as Mario 128 and to its full bloom as Pikmin, their journey to this game's inception was definitely not normal. Almost as abnormal as the situation Olimar is thrust into. As Olimar was flying his spaceship as one does, he unfortunately has an abnormality in his flight and is hit by a meteor. This forces him to crash land on an unknown planet, which leads us to the first level of Pikmin, the impact site. The impact site is very impactful in the rest of the game, and in Olimar's journey of getting off this unknown planet. As soon as Olimar wakes up on this unknown planet, we get to see his inner monologue of what is rushing through his mind. Many thoughts are shown to us, but the main one that sticks out is that he's surrounded by poisonous gas called oxygen. Everyone who plays this game instantly might just assume that he breathes carbon dioxide or nitrogen. However, clearly they haven't taken into account everything we've been given so far. If we look at Olimar in his stature compared to a simple flower, we find that he is abnormally short. However, we find from his voice lines we see in Pikmin 2 that despite his tiny vocal cords, he still has an extremely deep voice. This must mean that the Hoctatian race breathes sulfur hexafluoride. This constantly keeps their voice deep and counteracts their natural high pitch. After Olimar witnesses the miracle of life with his first set of red Pikmin, he decides to branch out to hopefully find something that can allow him to plan out his current predicament. This leads him to a carton with the number 10 on it. While 10 is the number of Pikmin required to move the carton, it also would make sense that this number would be labeling the amount of objects originally stored inside of this carton. This information can help us derive what the carton was supposed to hold, and unfortunately, it's pretty obvious what was being stored when this carton was in use. The only objects that come in cartons of 10 of this relative size would be cigarettes. Why Nintendo decided to put such an uneco-friendly object in a game about little plant guys is unknown, but disturbing nonetheless. After Olimar retrieves the engine, not much is left to retrieve without enlisting the help of Yellow Pikmin and Blue Pikmin. So Olimar sets out and comes back with his newly acquired plant men to retrieve another ship part. However, little did Olimar know that on odd numbered days, as opposed to even numbered days with the Mamuta, the Gulix is a massive threat to his Pikmin population, only sparing Blue Pikmin from its dangerous watery body. However, weirdly enough, no matter how hostile the Gulix is, clearly it shares a similar goal to the Mamuta taking shifts daily guarding the specific stump from intruders. So this brings up the question, why is this stump so important to these creatures? The only logical answer is that they both really enjoy the comfort this stump provides and don't want their happy place to be invaded. The tiny clam oasis we find in the back of the impact site is home to two clams enjoying their day. However, weirdly, one of them has latched onto our positron generator and holds it inside of its mouth. This is odd, especially considering clams usually have pearls like we see in the clam right next to it. What seems to have happened is the clam on the left was unable to form its own pearl, but seeing his friend have one, got jealous and insecure about not having a pearl of his own. This caused him to look for something shiny to fill his mouth with to fit in, which coincidentally was our positron generator. Back at the side of our impact, we can find a tiny pile of sticks. These piles, when utilized by the Pikmin, can allow Pikmin to reach higher heights for utility purposes, such as getting a pellet as we see here. However, this simple action gives us insight on a hidden ability of all Pikmin. It seems as though Pikmin have an incredible control over nature. If you look at the foreign piece of wood, it looks as though it was a recently felled log. This means that Pikmin somehow have the ability to combine multiple separate pieces of wood seamlessly into a log that is indistinguishable to a natural one. And that is the end of this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do.